Hi, Mike Snodgrass here again. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create a reusable effects preset in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. We're going to take a green screen video, as you see here to my left, and use Premiere's Ultra Key effect to remove the green background from behind my talking head. We're then going to use Premiere's motion effects to resize and reposition our video clip. We will then save those combined effects as a reusable effects preset that can be exported and then imported into future projects. As always, if you would like training for yourself or your company, please visit my website at www msnod.com and I'd be happy to work with you. All right, let's take a look at the lesson. Okay, so there are three steps involved in preparing our talking head video. First, I need to resize the clip so that it's smaller and fits into the frame. Secondly, we're going to remove the green screen in order to reveal the uh, blue graphic behind. And then thirdly, we will reposition the image to the lower left portion of the screen. All right, so let's start by resizing. This project is being produced at 720p, which means 720 pixels of vertical resolution and 1280 pixels of horizontal resolution. However, the talking head green screen clips were shot at 1080p. So that's 1080 vertical pixels by 1920 horizontal pixels. So obviously the green screen shot's a little too big. So our first step is to resize that. So I'll go to the timeline at the bottom and I will make sure that my first uh, talking head clip here on track V2 is selected. And then I'll go to the effects control panel, which I have docked up here at the top left. Now on your uh, screen, if uh, Premiere's panels aren't laid out in the same manner, you're probably just in a different workspace. Along the top of the Premiere interface, you'll see a number of workspace options, assembly, editing, color, effects, etc. So uh, Premiere defaults to the editing workspace. I have simply chosen the effects workspace. You click that, your screen should look pretty much like mine. Okay, so in the effects controls panel, I'm gonna focus on the motion effect. And motion doesn't just control movement, it also controls positioning, rotation, uh, things like that. So I'm gonna click the disclosure triangle to the left of motion and go to the scale property. And I'm going to change the scale from 100 to 67%. And you can see my green screen video clip shrinks to fit. Excellent. I'm now going to return to the effects control panel and once again click the disclosure triangle to the left of the motion category just to clean the panel up a bit since I'm about to add uh, another effect here and it's going to get pretty full pretty quick. Okay, so now I want to remove the, uh, the green screen from behind my talking head. So I'm going to go to the effects panel, which I have docked over here at the right side of the screen. And instead of digging through these folders and looking for Ultra Key, I'm going to click into the search field at the top of the effects panel and type in Ultra, and that's enough. I should see the Ultra Key effect pop up under Video Effects, Keying. So I'm going to drag the Ultra Key effect and drop it onto the first clip on Video Track 2. Now, in my program monitor, nothing changes on our video. However, in the effects control panel, I now see below motion, opacity, and time remapping, a fourth effect, ultra key. 
So now that we've added our ultra key effect, the first thing we need to do is set our key color. Key color is simply the color that will be rendered transparent. So I'm going to click the eyedropper next to key color. And because my green uh, fabric background was not completely smooth, there are some darker uh, shaded areas in the fabric. And I've just found, particularly with me wearing a black shirt in this video, it's going to be easier to key this out cleanly if I sample a darker area of the green. So I'm going to click into this darker bit of shaded area down here. And not a bad start. The majority of the green fabric is removed, and I can now see my blue patterned background, but it's not completely removed. You can still see uh, the texture of the fabric showing through some of the shadows, etc. So, we we'll want to fine-tune our effect a little bit. So, I'm going to move back over to Effects Control, and I'm going to focus in on the matte generation properties. So, I'll click the Disclosure Triangle next to Matte Generation, and I'm going to leave Transparency as is for now. I think it's okay. The default highlight is a value of 10. Essentially, the higher the value for highlight and shadow, the more the lighter or darker areas become opaque. So I'm going to reduce the highlight value and see what happens to those uh, remaining creases I see in the background. So I, I'm going to use a really cool trick here that works in After Effects, Photoshop, Flash, etc. Instead of clicking on the number 10 here for highlight and typing a value, I'm going to point to the number and you'll see the cursor changes to a finger with a couple of arrows either side. That means I can click and drag left or right and dynamically change the number. So I'll click and hold and start dragging to the left and you can see the number lowers and well at a highlight value of zero, our background looks pretty clean now. Matter of fact, aside from a little spot right here and a little spot down here, it looks really clean. But I want to make sure, uh, and with the blue background behind, it's kind of hard to see any subtle noise that might be uh, remaining in our original green screen background. So I'm going to go down to the timeline. And in the timeline, I'm going to hide the V1 track. So I'll click the I, the toggle track output button for V1, and that's going to hide our blue pattern background, leaving just black video and our track 2 overlay. So now you can see there are actually a few issues left here. I've got some noise remaining in the background, and I've also got a bit of a halo effect running around my silhouette. So let's address those next. So I'm going to go back over to Effects Control, and I'm going to play with shadow a little bit. I think it's probably okay, but I'm going to lower the shadow amount a little bit and see what we get. So I'll start dragging lower, and yeah, even down to zero, I don't really see an improvement here. So I'm going to put that back to around 50 where I started. And I'm going to work with the pedestal property. Pedestal is effectively a filter to remove noise, which is a lot of what we see here. So I'm going to take the pedestal value and start to increase that. And I'll click and drag to the right to increase it. You'll see almost immediately that noise disappears in the background. And I'll drag it up till I see no more noise and until the bit of edging or halo around my silhouette also disappears. So that looks like a pedestal of around 50, somewhere thereabouts. Looks really pretty clean here. And I'm going to go ahead and make the V1 track visible again. Let's see what we've got. So I'll go back down the timeline and click the I visibility for V1. Yeah, this looks pretty good. 
Matter of fact, the only thing I really see that remains is a bit of green highlighting, particularly on my bald head. And that's just a bit of spill, uh, reflection coming off the lit green background. So I'm going to go back over to Effects Control, and I'm going to find the Spill Suppression Properties category. And I'll click the Disclosure Triangle for that. And I'm going to take the Spill number and start to increase it. And as I do, the green spill on my head is gone. Now that might be kind of hard to see if you're watching this on YouTube, depending on what resolution you're viewing it at or what size screen. Uh, but if I lower the spill, maybe you can see that, a pretty significant greenish outline. So I'll take that back up, and it looks to me like mid-70s is a really pretty good number. Great! So we've used the Ultra key to extract our green screen background. I'm going to scroll back up my effects control panel and click the disclosure triangle for the ultra key again, just to clean the panel up. So my last step to prepare this video is to reposition myself on the screen towards the lower left. So I'm going to go back and click on the word motion in the effects control panel. By clicking on the actual parent category of motion, I get both sizing handles and a center point on that video clip, which means I don't have to expand the motion category and start manipulating position. All I've got to do is drag the clip. So I will click and drag, move over a little bit like so. I tend to wave my arms around a bit when I'm talking, so maybe I'll position about like that. So in case I do wave my arms up, my hands will appear on screen, and that looks, that looks pretty good. So we've now prepared this clip for production. The problem is, if I now go to the second clip on V2, it's sitting in its initial state, green background, everything. So I want to save all that I've done as a preset that can not only be then applied to the second clip in this project, but exported and then imported into future projects. Be a great time saver. So I'm going to go back to the effects control panel. And I'm going to click on the motion category, make sure it's still highlighted. And then I'm going to hold down on the Macintosh, the command key, and on uh, PC Windows, I'll hold down the control key. And while holding command or control, I'm going to click on Ultra key. So you'll see that now both of these effect categories are selected. I'm then going to click on the effects control panel menu, which is this little hamburger menu located on the tab at the top of the panel. I'll click there and choose Save Preset. In the Save Preset dialog box, I'll give it a descriptive name. So I'll call this Green Screen Talking Head. And I'll just confirm the type is Scale, which basically means it's going to save all the properties that I've selected in the effects control and ignore any in and out points on the clips. So this is going to be a properties-based preset and have nothing to do with time. I'll click OK. And let's give it a try. So I'm going to go down to the timeline, the bottom, and I'm going to drag the playhead over to the right, further down the timeline, until I can see the second clip. This process of dragging the playhead left or right through time is called scrubbing the timeline or scrubbing the playhead. So you can see now this clip is large green background, not ready. So I'm going to go back to the effects 
panel that I have docked over here at the top right. I'm going to click the X here in the search field to remove the ultra search from earlier. And I'm going to click the disclosure triangle next to the presets folder. And there's my green screen talking head preset. So I'm just going to drag and drop that preset onto the second clip in the V2 track. And voila, processed. Green screen removed, resized, repositioned. Fantastic. Now all that remains is to export this preset and save it out on my desktop or onto a shared drive. So when I build future projects, I can easily import it and apply it. So I'm going to go back to the effects panel, right click on the preset and choose export presets. I'll give it a name, green screen, yeah, we'll just call it green screen processing. And I'll save it on my desktop for now. All right, I'm not going to launch a new project now to demonstrate importing it. So what I'll do is just delete my existing preset here and then import the what we just exported. So I'll go back to my effects panel. I'll click on that preset and I'll click the trash can bottom right of the effects panel. Confirm. All right, it's gone. You'll notice it didn't damage uh, any of the work done in the clips. Once the uh, preset is applied, then the effects remain, whether you delete the preset or not. All right, so I'm going to go back to effects. Now I'm going to go to the panel menu at the top right of effects. Click the menu, import presets. I will locate, there's my preset on the desktop. Click open and imported. And there you have it. That's how you create a reusable effects preset in Adobe Premiere Pro.